Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad with Patriot Astro, and I'm back here again today with another polar alignment video. And it's another exciting one for two reasons. One, you don't need to see Polaris, which is big for a lot of people, whether you have trouble finding Polaris uh, at home based on obstructions, or when you travel, you may never know when you're going to have a Polaris obstruction. So it's great to have something like this in your back pocket. The second reason that this is exciting to me is that it's built into Nina as part of the new 1.11 plugin infrastructure. And this is something you can easily add to Nina. And you're about to see it actually works very well and it was really easy to use. And what I'm showing you is the very first time I ever used this. So it was this easy the first time out of the gate. I'm sure it only gets better from there. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what we can do here. So you can see I'm in a recent nightly release of 1.11 Nina. I'm gonna to go to the plugins page. You can see the plugins that are available and I've added the three point polar alignment plugin. There's a great description here telling you about the process. Um, after you do install it, uh, you will need to restart Nina. So do it early on, right? Open Nina, add the plugin and then shut it down and then restart and you're good to go. Now, once that is there, there are some options. Uh, on the plugins page, you can change some of the colors. Um, if, if you'd like to change the error colors or, you know, outs or as colors, that's fine. Now, once that is installed, go to the advanced sequencer and there's a new command under polar alignment. The new command is the three point polar alignment command. And that's all you need to drag and drop over into the sequencer. You can make some modifications here. I increased my time up to five seconds. I actually probably would leave that shorter next time. And I did change my filter to my luminance to make sure that I could get enough bright stars. Once you're ready, just hit start to start the sequence. So the first thing it's going to do is slew to the alt as target that was in the setup. Now I didn't modify what was already there. I just went with it. And because it's alt as, it's pretty predictable to know where it's gonna be pointing in the sky. It's gonna point there and it's gonna take an exposure and do a plate solve. And then it's going to move to another location, do the same thing, and then a third. So it's basically gonna do three points to try to understand where you are based on movement, um, at a predicted speed and a predicted distance, and uh, comparing that to what we're actually plate solving as a result that it gets from each of the three images. Now, once those three are plate solved and it determines your orientation and where you are in the sky, then it can begin to instruct us how to move our azimuth and altitude in such a way that will be polar aligned. So again, I'm letting that run. We've just completed the calculation and we can see it's provided us an azimuth error and telling us to move right and an altitude error telling us to move down. So we can see that it, it's trying to instruct us to make our corrections. Now, you are going to, at this point, go over to your mount and start to make these corrections, hopefully while you're looking at this screen. But notice we're getting some real time or near real time feedback because it's constantly taking those five second exposures, plate solving, and then relaying that data both in a visual um, image on the screen, as well as azimuth and altitude error updates. So what I'm doing here while I'm looking at my screen, and, and I'm not gonna show you this video, is I'm using the adjustment knobs, right? So I'm using the adjustment knobs to adjust my azimuth and my altitude. And as I do that, you'll notice that I get real-time feedback and get the update on the screen, right? So I'm uh, usually focusing on one, I'm not moving all the knobs at once, right? So I'm focusing on either azimuth or altitude, I'm trying to get one close, and then I'll make some moves on the other side, and then I continue to fine tune. But again, this was a very quick process. Um, as I went through it. Now, if you see things like plate solving failed up top, don't worry about that. It's usually because the image was taken while I was using the adjustment knobs and I had star trails, um, it, it'll go ahead and correct. Now, also notice what it's trying to do is direct us using that, that box and target, showing us our errors, right? So it's showing us um, where our error is and where we're trying to move the stars uh, from a targeting perspective. To be honest, just like I did with SharpCat Pro, um, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the azimuth error and whether it's telling me to move right or left and the altitude error and whether it's telling me to move up and down. The visual 
updates on the screen. That's good. Just it gives me a quick visual to say, hey, it looks like I need to move in this case more altitude than azimuth based on the color of the box. Um, so I know what I should be focusing on. Also, as you get close, and you'll see here in a second, it places you within the target and lets you know how close you are. Um, so again, it's another type of visual indicator. And I'm not looking for perfection here, right? Um, I've mentioned this before. For me, it's more about getting really, really close. Um, I'm guiding as well. So the combination of a very good polar alignment with PhD2 guiding tells me that I can take five minute exposures, right? Without a problem. Um, there's also a lot to be said and a lot of discussion out there about, do you want to be perfectly polar aligned based on errors in your mount? Or do you want to be heavy in this direction or heavy in that direction? Do you want to be slightly off if you're guiding on one axis? What's going to give you the best results, right? So I'm not going to go there um, in this video, certainly. Uh, but again, it's something to consider for me. I just want to get very, very close and I want to get there quickly and I want to get to imaging, right? I want to get that part of the night going. Um, if I spend too much time on polar alignment, I'm just losing imaging time um, that could be valuable, right? Whenever the clouds are going to move in. You've seen clouds move through this video. So we can see here, I've gotten really, really close and I'm inside the target. And for me, a total error uh, that I have here is very acceptable. So um, I think this is it, right? This is where I'm going to actually wrap it up and uh, call it, right? So I'm going to leave this here. Now, just like I did in my other videos, I'm going to go ahead and use Pollmaster just to do a quick verification of this, just because I've used it throughout all the other polar alignment videos I did as a secondary verification, just so you can see how close Pollmaster thinks I am versus these other mechanisms. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and do that now. So I'll just close out of all of this, minimize Nina, get into Pole Master, and uh, connect the camera, make some adjustments. Now I am going to accelerate this. There's no reason for us to watch an entire Pole Master polar alignment since I've done that in a previous video, which I'll link up at the top of the screen here right now. So you can see though, we're going through it, we're finding our center, and this is our error, right? I'd say that's more than acceptable for a very quick polar alignment using Nina as a plugin. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully this is something that you may want to uh, use yourself. Um, remember, it's another way to do polar alignment when you find yourself without Polaris visibility. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep taking great images. Let me know if there's any way I can help you. Certainly leave comments. Remember to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share this video with others. And we'll see you again soon. Clear skies. Thank you.